This edition, Inside Baseball, some tips and tricks for business success in the handyman business. The handyman pros are going to have a discussion about being a handyman, some business success tips and tricks that might help you get a little bit farther ahead. Welcome to the Handyman Pros Radio Show, home improvement and maintenance tips from the pros. Thanks for listening to another edition of the Handyman Pros Radio Show, where our goal is to help save you time, money, and aggravation. This edition is entitled, So You Want to Be a Handyman. To help explain, I'm here with my ever-cheerful co-host and old buddy, John. John, what has been going on this week? Hey, greetings, Larry. Greetings. Hey, um, going on this week? Well, you know, um, I have been, I've been doing some, so, a lot of work at my house, just well, we've got some downtime, and it's uh, been a little hot out, and it, plus it's been raining, um, you know, and and that's kind of put a damper on a few things I've been doing outside for some some folks. But um, uh, I took the opportunity to to start to uh, do some or keep going on some things. Uh, you know, I had a <laughs> I had a little leak in my uh, in my ceiling in the uh, in the garage, and that that had to take some wallboard down there and put a new piece of ceiling up and. So that was a lot of fun. But, uh, you know, I kind of started to think about, you know, it's all the things that I've been doing recently over the last year or two um, in this in this business. And as both of us know, you know, I mean, we go from one thing to another. It's wall boards or decks or it's, you know, uh, electrical or, you know, uh, lights and all kinds of things. And, I, you know, maybe it was a good time to kind of take a step back here and just do a little bit about you know, being a handyman. Yeah, well, I think it was spurred. We were having a conversation before the show about actually about we were both doing our accounting over the weekend, right? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe you said that because I did the exact same thing. I had it down day the other day, and I thought, you know, I, I got to look at my my books and just see what's what's going on. And you know, you you must have done the same thing because uh, I was like, oh man, I'm I'm behind. Yeah, and and it was kind of the thing about one of the things I think when we when we talk about this because again, you know, our goal is to help save time, money, and aggravation, right? Well. You really don't know about saving money until you know, like, you have your books in order, right? I mean, you really don't know where you are until your books are in order. So that was what spurred. And then, and then we were talking about what kind of ideas do we want to do for a show. And, and we were like, you know, so what if somebody wanted to, to, do a, to be a handyman? What, what kind of tips would you and I give out if somebody wanted to be a handyman? Maybe just as a side hustle, right? You know, somebody might want to come in and just they've got a certain skill set and they want to pick up a little extra money on the side. You know, is the handyman business a good business? and and, and uh, that sort of thing. So I, I said, let's do this, John. Let's have this conversation. Yeah. So it's going to be a little bit of inside baseball, folks. If you're, you know, but but there's still some things that are kind of relevant yeah. that you'll that you'll ha- that have relevance to if you're just doing home projects as well. Yeah. So kind and of, since we kind can't and since we can't watch baseball right now, that's right. We uh, can't watch so baseball. Let's talk, let's talk about a little bit of inside baseball. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, and and is this and, and you know, I think when when you're listening to this, folks, is that is is the handyman thing your you know kind of your gig? Yeah, you know? is it your gig? Is it going to be something you know, that might so appeal to you? So let's talk about. It. I mean, you're listening to the podcast. You know, we're trying to we bring you a lot of good information, and you know, we thought, well, this might be a good thing to. Yeah, to maybe do. we can help you make a little money. Yeah, with some exactly. of the skills that you've got. So one of the, I guess one of the first things we want to John. We've had this discussion because we've talked to a lot of people from around the country and around the world. And um, we want you to understand, before you even contemplate becoming a handyman, understand your state laws, right? And, uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, every state is different, right? So as you all know, John and I are in Georgia. Georgia is actually probably one of the better states to be a, a handyman in. Their, their laws are... Um, well, I don't want to say they're liberal. They're not really liberal, but they, they have it. They, it's based on dollar volume, right? So if your jobs are less than $2,500 per job, yeah. you're considered yeah, that would, you can be a handyman. Yeah, I kind of characterize it as it's a little less, it's a little less restrictive than a lot of uh, other, other states. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into specifics of, uh, of it, you know, um, you know, but some of the southern states here are pretty, pretty, um, Lacks in some of the things, um, and others that's not are to pretty say you're tight. doing, a, doing yeah. it wrong. But you know, it has to do a lot with you know taxing and 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 just certificates and this, that, and the other. And so I, I think you're dead. You're dead right. Is that you know, hey, um, before you get into uh, doing the handyman thing, you know, see, see what see what your state has to uh, has to say because we have limits. 
We yeah. have limits, yeah. and our limits are much different than, let's say, uh, you know, Alabama's twice the the limit that we have. So it's, you know, um, you well, know, and like then that. And, and conversely, I had a friend who who was asking me about it. Right, he's a, a guy I knew through, know through the financial independence um, community, and he actually lived in Massachusetts. Right, so he and he was doing he was a general contractor in Massachusetts, and he was doing handyman what we would call handyman services in Massachusetts, no problems. Right, he moved to Florida because he was reti- he wanted to get out of the north, you know, and get yeah. out of the cold. Goes yeah. to Florida, and all of a sudden now in Florida, he's asking me. He goes, "Well, well, you know, can I do this?" And I said, "Well, I, I don't know the Florida laws." So I've been having this conversation with him, and it's like Florida's like they want you to have a license for everything. I mean everything. I mean everything. So he's yeah. like, "I can't do it. I can't because I I don't want to run it." He wants to run it like a kind of a side hustle. This is why we got on this conversation. He wanted to run it as a side hustle. He doesn't want to work full time, you know, and he doesn't want to have to go through all the regulatory stuff to get the to get the licenses and all that. He just wanted to do, you know, he wanted to do some jobs on the side. Well. Yeah, basically yeah, and, in Florida, that's un, it's t- yeah. really tough to do. Really, yeah. Tough. And, and that's so, and now and I was going to say, Larry, that stems from you know um, a, a lot of um, shady things that had gone on after hurricanes and things. Oh, down absolutely. There. And yeah. that's you know, so so folks, you know, you have to kind of you kind of have to look at what what's uh, what's going you know what's going on in your state in that thing because you know you're absolutely right. Is it? It, it, this is a it's a great gig for somebody who wants to do things on the side, you know, like, um, you know, for instance, I'm I'm retired and I do this for, you know, some extra money and things like that. And it's, uh, you know, it's it's great for 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 me. Yeah. Yeah. So. So that's the first thing before you do anything. Look at your state laws, because that's just kind of what we've just kind of learned that through ta- actually talking to other people. So, um, probably the second thing is really understand what your skills are, right, John? I mean, we, you know, you and I, we've been we've been fooling with this stuff just on a personal basis, and then doing pro- semi professionally, or well, professionally and or semi professionally, on a lot of different things for a long time. Um, I know you both, you and I, we have each of us have our what do we want to call it more preferred jobs that we mind that we like to you know there's things we like doing there's things we don't like doing i mean right. we both have great um no disrespect to painters but i am not a painter <laughs> yeah I, yeah I, nope. I, I think that's yeah we don't uh, I, I we don't i think we both think the same the same on that we don't we don't do big painting jobs and things like that it's just not that's not where our suit really is i mean it's that that's just that's just not it um so it's it's more I think more of the technical things on my side and as, as well as your side. I'm I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a problem you know, solving solver, problems. I like say. Yeah, I, I like to get those kind of complex jobs that 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 yeah. take unique thought processes to get them done. But be that as it may, I I take the I know what I can do right. I have I know what skills I have. I know what I can do, and I know what I can't do. Um, and then I also have a, you know, and we've discussed this on the show before, but we both have a, a we'll call them physical limitations, right? We both don't do high ladders anymore because we don't. We're older. Um, but understand all of these things that you want to do, you know. And so if you're thinking about being a handyman, even as a side hustle or you want to get into it full time, it doesn't matter. Understand you, you can't do everything all the time. It's just not going to be what you can do you know i mean i can do all kinds of things i can run equipment i can do all that stuff do i want to do that no i just don't it's not in my wheelhouse i don't want to make the investment all that kind of thing so you know it's just that right so do you have any is there anything there that you want to add to that john no no i mean you know once you get it up and running i would you know when you're when when we when we start to talk about that you know just to just to understand you know what your skill set at what what's your limitations you know get comfortable with a couple of things that you do very well um you know and and um i think larry you brought it up earlier though i'll, I'll bring it up again is that you know once once the, you know just keep in mind as we're talking about all this it's a business right yeah it um, is a business so, it is a business so you know, you're running, you're, you, you will be running, running a business. Um, so. Yeah. And the goal uh, of a business is to generate profitable customers, right? Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? That's, that's really the goal. So, um, that with that in mind, that's why we say it's a business because it's a business, you know, it, it is, it is what it is. Um, so you've done all that, right? You figured out you can do it in your state, right? Or you can do it in your you know, check your your local municipalities too, because they can be kind of wonky. You know, even here in Georgia, like we understand, lo- mm-hmm. some of the local municipalities are more difficult to work in than others. So take take a good look at that too. We we didn't really talk about that before, but <clears throat> that it does matter. Depends where you are, right? So right. you've got that. You've got your <clears throat> skills. You know what you want to do. How do you get your first customer, John? How do you get customers? How do you keep? Well, customers? you know, I think, I think, yeah, I, th- I think, I think one of the things is that you know, it, it, 
to me, it was always a, like the strategy is what, what did I want to do? You know, when, when I was going and acquiring customers, what did I want to do? You know, what was, how far did I want to go? So, because I will tell you that people are going to ask you what you do. They, they ask me all the time. Right, Larry, when you're. Oh, constantly. When you're, yeah. Right. So they're always, they're always saying, you know, what do you guys do? And, and I generally say, you know, I'll tell you, it's easier for me to tell you what we don't do. <laughs> exactly. Yes. You know, honestly, and, and that is I, I'm not going to go above two stories and I'm not going to be on a roof, uh, you know, short of that. And I'm not going to do big painting jobs. Right. You know, I'm right. not going to paint a house. I'm not right. painting the house inside or out. It's just it's not what I do. Um, but anything else? Hey, I'll take a look at it. OK. Um, so there's a you know, I've got a I got a pretty good skill set and um, I'm pretty comfortable with doing just about just about everything. And remember, and, John, we don't do flooring. <laughs> and we, <laughs> yeah, we don't do flooring, which we just did three rooms. And um, but, uh, you know, I mean, we would we, we do just about just about, you know, everything. So I, I, but I think, you know, from the folks that are listening right now, it's you, you, you kind of start off with getting comfortable doing one thing, you know, Hey, maybe you like to, you know, maybe you're good at re, replacing a faucet, you know? Yeah. It, it's uh, amazing. Um, you know, or, it's amazing. You know, right. Yeah. Or, or fixing, you know, whatever. Hanging and, TVs, yeah, all kinds, hang, there's TV, all kinds of artwork. little things, you know, hanging artwork. Yeah. is another one, you know, um, you know, we talk about this on our show a lot, you know, how to, how to do these kind of things. And, you know, maybe you get really comfortable doing that and then you start to kind of branch out a little bit. But I think that's that one point there is, you know, just a strategy of what what do you want to do? And, you know, kind of think about the end goal in mind. When yeah, have the end in that. mind. Right. Because I will tell you, <clears throat> yeah, you know, getting your first you were asking getting your first job. Um, you know, I will tell you that. It, it is a it's a word of mouth and i actually you know i was actually out at the local tavern and <laughs> i mean this is how i got that's how i got started in this i met a couple of people um i did i have never done work for them um but they started to spread spread the word around about me you know on on some of the things that we'll be talking about here you know how to get some traction and the next thing i knew i was getting I was getting tips, leads, and things all all over the place. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, that's really how I got my first job. And now that kind of leads us into you know some other things, you know. But you know, Larry, what about uh, you know what about you? Well, yeah. So so folks, just so you kind of understand that John and I are both aviation guys, right? So in an when an airplane flies, it takes way more energy to get that airplane off the ground than it does to keep it flying. It's the same thing as your car. If you're going up, at, you know, when you start from a dead stop, it takes way more energy to get it going than it does to keep it rolling down the down the road. So when we talk about this stuff, we're talking about first, about getting that for, when you get those first couple of jobs, if you do these things that we'll, we'll give you some tips on a little bit in the, in the, in a couple of minutes, but if you do those things, you're running down the road and your business will continue to come. And so one of the things and we, I want to be cautionary because John started out just doing what I would call a networking process, right? Where he's out sitting at the local tavern, having a couple of cocktails, strikes up conversations with people, right? Next thing yep. you know, he's handing business cards out left and right all over the place. And now John can't even go back to that bar because he's so busy. Everybody wants him. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which, by the way, folks, just so you know, that's really a problem for John because he loves going yeah, to that bar. Yeah. Um, and they got the best chicken wings. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's a whole, whole nother show. Um, but uh, I started in a little different way. I, I actually started, I built a website. I did a lot, of, a lot of, we'll call it web promotions. And my goal was I was like, all right, I'm going to build this thing so that I, I, I can build the, the, the flow of people coming in in advance. And I did that via using social media and stuff like that and, and then using the website. Comparatively, in some ways, I wish I hadn't done quite so much because my lead flow is, can be overwhelming, right? And so I want you to be, be careful initially, especially initially, be careful in trying to generate too many leads because sometimes that can be almost, I don't want to say it's problematic, it's overwhelming. I think overwhelming is the right word. And John, you understand that because I mean, I, I call you all the time, hey, do you want this job? Do you want this job? Right, um, right. Just because. Right, right. And, yeah. 
<clears throat> so that, that that was my thing, you know. And it was this, but but the the process was the same. When I got the first few jobs, you know, I took I, I did a bunch of steps. I took really good care of my customers, and we'll get into some of that stuff. This is we're, we'll call this the ongoing stuff, but promotion, you know, promotion and or marketing. But if you take really good care of your customers, they'll start referring you as it were and your word of mouth becomes like gold i mean it really does become like gold it's not it's not a magic and if you do good work and you're and you're you know appropriately priced i'm not going to say inexpensive because that's not really the necessarily the goal but if you do good work and you're a good value wow the business getting business becomes not an issue at least that's been my experience yep yeah, and that's that's been my experience as well. And it's, you know, you get so many customers, and it, it is kind of it is kind of one of those um, like the old commercial. You know, you tell two people, they tell two people, and you know, it keeps spreading out. And it uh, it it does, and it it's a great thing. You know, and once again, folks, it, you you kind of have to think: is this is this kind of the thing for me? And you can you know, uh, to me as being a retired guy and trying to fill in the, the financial gaps here and there, and just have and having fun doing it and, and having something busy, to do. <laughs> um, it, yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, uh, you know, to, to me, it's it's uh, it's been a it's been a great thing, and and I can you know say I want the job or I don't want the job, and I think that's the other thing that we both like about this gig too is that, you know, there's some things that you know I really don't want to do that, um, or it's really not you know. I don't. I don't want that. I don't want that. You know, just for a, for a, for a variety of uh, a variety of reasons. It it sort of. I read an article this weekend. Uh, this is this is an aside, but I read this article about Warren Buffett, and he and he was just saying that Warren Buffett's thing. He, his advice to people is learn how to say no. He said right. more people have a problem saying they don't say no enough. And in our business, both you and I have learned kind of through the hard way is that you have to learn to say no. No, I, it's just not, it's, it's that, for whatever that, reason, it's not a fit. It, it, that, that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great point because you do, you know, and I learned that a long time ago in business. You have to learn to say no because you have, because you, you want to do the right business Okay, for the folks out there, when you think about this, you want to, you know, do working and doing good business is better than bad business. Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. Or you know, versus no business. <laughs> well, and you one know, lends itself to you know, the no, other, right? No, no business. <laughs> no business can be better than doing bad business because, as you know, as we both know, Larry, that you, you know, you can be called back time and time and time again, you know, without getting paid. You know, because there's just some things that, you know, people are very, very, you know, particular and things like that, that you're just like, no, I'm just going to pass on this one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you just have to pick and, and, and you have to you have to be cognizant of being profitable. Okay? Right. So so you have to do you have to do the right things. Yeah. And, and, and to that point, we're not we're how do how do we say this you get to read your customers eventually you kind of know what they want and things like that but it does get back to part of it is job selection you know we're we're, i I don't know i'm just going to say concrete work. i'm just going to use concrete work so you know we both you and i know how to do concrete work right um and somebody comes in they say oh you know i want you to do this this and this and oh by the way can you do the concrete work and you go and you have to you have to be able to say no i don't i don't i don't do the concrete work even though you can, but it, you, if you understand that it can actually detract from the rest of the job, you've just got to be really, really careful with saying yes to too many facets if you're not fully right. comfortable with certain things. Yeah. I mean, I'll give you, an, in my personal example, I don't do any kind of electrical work inside an electrical box, and I generally don't do 220 either. You know, Now, I mean, I'll wire an outlet for 220, but that's it. I don't do anything more than that, and I don't even really do that for money um, um, because it's just it's, I just don't feel comfortable with it. It's just something that you I say You just like no. to do it for fun. I just like to do it when I hook the <laughs> wires up to myself and say, yeah. power that baby up, yeah, you know. No, but I mean, it's, yeah. There, that is true. That's, you know, I'll give you a case in point. Of, I, I, I got one of my customers, and they just keep asking me about all kinds of different things. And, and some of them are, you know, some of the things are just great, you know, not a problem. But then there's other things that he asked me about that um, I, I just turned, I have to, t- I just turn it down. I'm like, I'm just not that guy. Yeah, it's just, um, it, you know, it, can I do it? Absolutely. Well, I do, do I, you know, just, I, and I do him a favor saying that. Yeah, because, that's really. The, I guess that's kind of the point, isn't it, John? Is that when you when you don't accept jobs that you're not really good at, that you're not going to do a great job at, 
you actually assure that you're going to get further business. Would you agree right. with that? Or, it, it, exactly. You know, and in my case, it's just, you know, it's, I did a lot of heavy, you know, a lot of, a lot of heavy maintenance and things like that. And, you know, aircraft and, you know, it's just at this, at this point in, in time, I'm just not going to do a lot of heavy work, you know, and I'm thinking about like a, you know, outdoor landscaping, you know, hardscapes and, and timbers and things. No, you know, I got to pass on that. Well, it's, it's funny I'm you say gonna, that. I'm kind of done with that. We both just looked at a job. We both, while well, we were working on the job, right? It's one of our very good customers that you and I have done some work both for as a, as a pair because we've needed to do the work as a pair. And he has a huge timber wall that needs to be replaced. It's 25 or 30 years old. And it's a typical timber wall after 25 or 30 years old. It's like, put your finger through it. You know, it's gone. And we've both said, uh, no. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. uh, nope, because yeah, same that's, deal, that's, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's just, exactly. just not in our wheelhouse. And that's some of the other reasons that you don't do certain jobs. Like you don't have the equipment, you know, flat out, right? If you don't have a, you know, if you need a Bobcat or something, you don't have one, you can't rent one, or you don't have the desire to rent one. You don't, don't take the, just say no, you know, just learn to say no, learn to be some, pretty specific if you're not fully comfortable with things. And I will say one other thing, ask lots of questions. So, hey, John, can you hang a ceiling fan for me? Yeah. Well, I mean, what do you expect? Uh, I mean, there's, you just have to kind of be a little bit of a Columbo on, on these kind of things. You <laughs> yes. know, like how, how high is it? <laughs> no, and, and I will say these, these um, you, you know, in this day and age with the, with, with um, you know, with phones, everybody's carrying around cameras and phones and being able to, you know, exchange pictures. Real, I always ask. I always ask for the courtesy of, can you send me a picture of, of the project? Yeah, shoot me a picture. Now, now for me, you know, folks out there that, you know, if you don't have a big truck like Larry does, um, you know, and you're working out of something smaller uh, like I have, a large SUV or something like that. I mean, to me, that that allows me to pack accordingly to that job. So I don't have I don't travel around with everything, you know, um, all the time. So, I you know, travel and, with everything, <laughs> and you and you, yeah, you kind of, yeah, you kind of like the moving Home Depot store, and I, and I mean that's great, but the other thing I use it for is that you know I like to size up what that what the job is. So you know when you're getting into this business, is that you just really would like to get you know mentally, I do anyways, and maybe folks out there that you can pick up on some of this too, and maybe it works for you is mentally prepare yourself for what what you're about to do so that you have all the right tools that you kind of, you know, you've got the education to do this, to do this type of work, um, you know, and what the expectation is then at least you be, it, it, be, before you even go out to see it. Yeah. Okay? Because it's very easy for people and people are happy to do that. People usually will, people usually will lead with that. They'll actually send me text me pictures. Yeah. You um, hope. But I use the yeah, ceiling fan because do. I use the ceiling fan because you know yeah it's like oh yeah I can install a ceiling fan yeah, well it's in my foyer it's forty feet up in the exactly. middle of, in the middle of the ceiling and it's, then you're like exactly. whoa whoa you know I got a friend of mine I got a friend of mine just along that line I got a friend of mine that's got a ceiling you know and I just look at that every time I go over to his house I look at that thing I'm like there's no way I'm, <laughs> there's no there's, way. I, I mean, I'm not even, I'm, yeah, I mean, there's no It's a way. scaffolding job, right? You know, you'd need it's, scaffolding yeah, I, to do it effectively and safely, right? It, yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, the flying will lend us. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's like there is no way, you know? So, yeah, anyways. So, yeah, so anyway, so so just, you know, be aware, be aware of those kinds of things. So that's part of what we went to. So also by getting your first job, you know, don't, don't, we, we wanted to just give one good tip and that's use the, use the socials, right? Use social media because you can use Facebook next door or anything. Um, just again, be careful because you can get overwhelmed really rapidly, but there's always people, particularly on Facebook in, in our world anyway, and I, and it's different. There There's people asking on Nextdoor and things too, but there's always people asking, do you know somebody that can do X? And, you know, gosh, if you're just looking for those first few jobs, you can get on those, you can get in those sites. And I, we, one of my very first jobs actually is something that came off a Facebook group. It was one of the local groups and, and uh, that customer has been a strong customer for me. In fact, I'm doing some work for him at the end of this week. Mm -hmm. And then he's also referred me to, I can't even tell you how many people he's referred me to bunches, including his own business. So it's been, you know, that all came from one small lead that I responded to on, on Facebook. Now I don't do a lot of Facebook marketing or anything that was just one where i was looking through it was and i can't remember what it was originally but it was like you know can somebody do you know hang sh shelving or something like that and I yeah was like, and, and i just, you know. say, just yeah just to add on to that too um is that 
you're right. When when you when you think about the the people out there, they're they're really most of the people out there are really proud of you know that they have they have somebody that does great work for them. And we're going to talk about this, um, you know, how to be professional, and we're, we're we try to be as professional as possible. And people really appreciate that, and then they become very um, proud of of that, to, so that they can broadcast it to their friends. <laughs> and it's kind of funny, you know. It's like, um, man, I, you know, hey, man, I'd love you like a brother here for 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 uh, you know sending my name around. I mean, I really do, and it's you know, I kind of feel bad when I have to turn down some of that business. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Know? Because it's, it's true. just because because you're now in, in such a network of 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 customers and the, and the, and it's just kind of a, a round robin of, uh, you know, work that happens within this circle of customers. And yeah. it's hard to, yep. it's hard to keep up with, um, with, with all that work as it is. Yeah. It, it, it gets overwhelming. It's back to, you know, we were saying at least it can be overwhelming too. Um, one other quick, just really quick tip is it is, it does tend to be a somewhat seasonal business as well. So like when it rains, it pours, just be aware, you know, if you get started in yeah. this business, when it rains, yeah, it pours. I think it's, that, that happens to a lot of things, you know, and, and you have to be prepared for it. Yep. Yep. It, it really helps. Um, we did want, we wanted to mention too, just like cus- we were talking a little bit about customer base there. I mean, how many customers is enough? And wow, you know, we're, we're both still kind of working on those numbers, but this is not a large customer type business, meaning you don't need thousands. In fact, I don't even know if you need hundreds. Um, my business base right now runs in the, it's sub 100, but these are people that call me on a really regular basis. So, you know, I have a hundred, I have less than a hundred people that give me consistent business and it keeps me busy full, full time. I mean, full time, full time. And, uh, John, I know yours is, is even less than that. So that's where it's really a great side hustle business. You know, it's just that you you just don't need, you don't need this massive marketing effort. You don't need this thing. You need to do a good job. John, let's talk about, let's talk about really how, how do you get that good word of mouth? Let's talk about that because we haven't talked about that yet. So you'd mentioned professionalism. What does that mean? I think, I think one of the things is that people really, really pick up on very quickly is if you're a professional and by that, I mean, the way that the way that you speak, the way you come across, the way that you dress, um, you know, you, you know, you, you you're clean, you're cleaned up, you know, you're not like you're just you just came off, you know, uh, the wood pile and you're just all, you know, just a big mess, you know, been working out all, you know, you know, all day, you know, and you're presentable, right? And you want to come to the job, you want to come to the job that way. Um, from the word of mouth and talking to people, you want to be presentable like that too. I mean, we both have, you know, shirts with our name, you know, our businesses on them and, you know, um, polo shirts and, you know, those kind of things. I mean, I mean, all this really, this really counts, uh, that way and and how your appearance, you know, and, uh, you're, you're asking the, the right questions, you know, you're just coming across as, as a more of a professional, um, than, you know, somebody just kind of just, yeah, I got some time. What do you need done? Yeah, exactly. And and a lot of it has to do with just really, so the difference is made in the very, very minor things, right? So years and years ago, I was yep. given the analogy that what's the difference between a horse and the Kentucky, Kentucky Derby that wins by a nose or wins by six furlongs? No, there's no difference, right? The guy that wins by the nose wins a million dollars. The yeah. guy that's six furlongs behind, you know, loses a million right. dollars. It's like, it's like professional golf. One stroke out of, you know, three days of golf. Right, exactly. And so it's all these little things. And so, you know, sit there with, 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 the, with sit there and think about yourself as a customer. What do you want? What what has ticked you off about? And we laugh about this. We've said this a and, number of times. That's a good way to put it. Right? And, we've, and yeah. do just the opposite. And do just the opposite. We've laughed about this a million times, right? We talk about showing up on time. Yep. Right. Yeah. People. People are like, "You're here. <laughs> You're here. What? What yeah, are you of doing course here? I'm here. I actually, actually, I'm sitting in my car because I'm ten minutes early. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I mean, and, and people, people are just shocked about that. Being neat and clean. You know, John. I carry two sets of clothes in the car if I'm doing a job in the morning and it's really nasty. You know, if it's if we're outside. We're, look, folks. We live in Georgia. It's hot and sweaty. Yeah. You know, you're doing an outside job. You get kind of rank. You know. I'll, st- I'll stop and change clothes halfway through the day. It's amazing how much of a, quote, sponge bath you can take in a sink at a quick trip, yeah. you know. I mean, right. seriously, right? But clean yourself up a little bit and then put on your second pair of clothes and go to the second 
great job. Don't walk in in your clothes that are soaked in sweat and, and disgusting. Right. Who You want somebody like that in your house? I mean, think about right. it. This right. is not brain we, we talk, you and I have talked about this, and we've said it on the show a million times. Clean up after yourself, right? John, your, both yours and my yep. policy is I, I try to leave the house in better shape than when I started. Absolutely. Right? I, I do not. My, my thing always in business has been through my whole business career and all the different things that I've done over the years is I do not want to create work for people. That's my goal. I do not want to create extra work for somebody. So if I come in and do a job, you know, and I'm cutting drywall, I'm going to vacuum up the dust or I'm going to – actually, I'm going to collect it while I'm doing it. But I, my, my goal is not to make work for somebody because if I make work for somebody, that's not a good thing. Do you want more to do? Right. 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 I mean, you know, and I, to, to that end, it's like if you ever bring your, you know, um, if you ever bring your car in uh, to have it serviced, um, it's really nice if they at the end of the time when they service your car, that they wash your car. A lot of places do that. And, I, you know, I think that's that, that's really great. I was always taught, um, you know, after after fixing a guy's airplane is to was to wash the airplane. Now, I'm not talking about washing an A300. I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, small planes that we used to work on. Right. You know, so if we were doing whatever, brakes, tires, you know, whatever it might be, um, on my side gig as a moonlighting, as a working in general aviation, you know, we washed the plane. Yeah. And everybody's like, wow. This, yeah, the plane's wow. washed. Yeah, Holy cow. Wow. And he vacuumed hey. it too. Wow. Man, you guys, this is this is great. So, you know what that means? That means they're gonna, who, who's going to be the first people you're they're going to think of to do more work on that? us yeah so you know it's just, it's the same thing and we always we always really um uh, you know promote that and i just you know every time i go out i i do the same thing clean up clean up clean up yeah do not leave the place a mess do not no. leave oil stains in and, the and, driveway <clears throat> do not no. leave and you I, know and i'll tell you i'll tell you you know what, what ticked me off would in, to do just the opposite what always ticks me off is you know the guys that come over here to in painting the house or doing something, you know, and leaving water bottles all over the place yeah, when they do left. not leave trash. They're, and yeah, they're like, okay, we'll see you later. Um, you know, thanks, thanks for the check. Um, and and I'm 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 still picking up water bottles, you know, out of the ivy and the bushes and stuff. You know, years <laughs> later, I'm like, what? You know, it's what like, the heck? you know, bottle caps and things like that. Yeah. It's like, you know, that's you know, no, don't do that. Slight edge, right? Slight yeah, edge. Slight just edge. by the nose. Just be out right. by the nose, you know. Win by right. the nose. All right, so anyway, so um, some other things to think about, right? So do understand some of your regulation, your regulatory codes. Like, so what building codes do you work under, right? Understand exactly. that. You don't, ha- you don't have to be comprehensive, but understand what you're doing to a degree, right? Understand if you're going to work on a deck, this is one of my favorite pet peeves because I got burned on this on my own personal project, but yeah. understand if you're working on a deck – that the deck codes might have changed in your municipalities, <laughs> and we just did the we just did a podcast. Yeah, on we just decks, did a show, so, on decks, so you but, folks can go back and uh, and, and, and listen that to that. Thing. But you know, under, understand that. Understand a little bit about you know if you're doing any kind of electrical, where do you fall in that electrical code? You know, are you a are you depending on your municipality, depending on your localities, are you even allowed to do that work? That's yes. You know, and yeah. so anyway, there's a million different things, but understand, have a basic understanding for that stuff. It's all out there on the internet, folks. You just type in wherever you're in, whatever county whatever municipality you're in and put in you know code building codes for uh for Scythe county georgia you know and it'll it'll bring it'll bring up more information you know what you do you'll actually have to sub search that to for the particular job you're looking for but be that as a way it's really important to know that um what else john educational i mean state continually I, I, educated i, I do yeah. i do this and it's easy to do these days uh, easier than it used to be um because of the internet so <clears throat> you know when i have downtime um, and I, I generally carve out some sometimes during a, during the week, whether it's a Sunday morning um, or whatever, when I'm not really doing anything, I sit down, have a cup of coffee, and I start going through some things that you know what I really I really need to hone my skills or my knowledge base on X X Y and Z. Boom, and I'll start to and I'll start to delve into it, you know, and that's really really helped me out in these uh, in these jobs. Um, be, yeah, because there's it's really so many difference. resources available. Oh my God! It, I mean, huge. Yeah. So it's really something that you just need to stay. You, you stay. You need to stay current um, because there is there's a lot of um, liability to 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 some of these jobs. 
Let's yeah. just put it that way. Well, there's liability, but there's other there's other things too. There's just efficiencies that you can achieve just in your operations. You know, if you well, that, that if you too. learn a, a tip, like a simple tip, like some of the tips we've given out. You know, we've given out a lot of tips that if you're doing a job, you save yourself a lot of time. And go back it, and it, listen to some of the short shows. That, and you'll that's hear them. right. That's right. And it, the, but the way I looked at it was that I really wanted to learn how to do some of the things. You know, right uh, and correctly. The first time, yes. because if you you can you can you can you can do a job and finish the job, okay, and it'll look great, but <clears throat> if it's not done right, it's gonna crack. You know, walls will crack or something. You know, if you just if you're not thinking, okay, and you're not doing the, the right things, and then guess what, you're gonna be going back and doing it again. You know, gratis. So, I kind of look at it that way. Um, well, that's a part of professionalism, right? But it's, yeah, it always it always is good to you know brush up on you know the how to use how to use tools correctly, how to do this, how to do that, you know those kind of things, you know. So I I, I continually uh, you know go through that that process. Yeah, and and also so there believe it or not there are some technological changes too. So there's Absolutely. some there's some new products that have come out, and there's some new techniques that have come out, and some of this stuff it saves you a huge amount of time. You got you got that's exactly right. Better job, you know, blah 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 blah. There's just there's just a million million reasons. It's just a continuing education. So we'll do that. So one of the other things that we always talk about is you do want to follow up and stay in contact with your customers, right? Because you just do, you know, make sure. Because you will generate business doing that alone. You'll be so busy that we're not going to even talk about it. But, you know, get an email or get a phone number and send them a text and say, hey, how's it going? D- wonders, right, John? Just does wonders. Always, I, you know, hey, I even, you know, I, I, I send them holiday cards. Yeah, whatever, you know, I mean, there's a million you know, techniques. Hey, thanks, and- you know. Looking forward to seeing you next year. Yeah, and we we you know we can assist you, but you can send us send us an email on all this stuff. We'll give you. I mean, if you want tips, trust me. If you want yeah. to hire us as consultants, we'll hire you. Shoot, you can come hire us. We'll we'll teach you how to be how to how to do the business if you want to call it that. And then I think last week we did want to talk. So this is roundabout, right, John? How do we get on this conversation? We were talking about yeah, our accounting about accounting yeah. accounting because this is a business. Okay, yes. so so kind of wrapping this whole this whole discussion up right now is that you know we started off by saying this is a business. And once you get it going, that you need to understand that it is a business. And that was the one thing that we were both were talking about was accounting. And you need to keep your numbers straight. Yeah, keep your numbers straight. Don't mix, you know, don't mix your money. There's a they, Talk to a CPA. They'll get you hooked up. But on the actual nuts and bolts of running your accounting is just it's it's really pretty simple. You have cost of goods sold, meaning what, you, what are you buying for the job? You know, you're buying lumber, you're buying this, you're buying that. So you got that. And you can do it just by the job. And you can do this on a sheet of paper. This is, this is I, We both use software, but you don't have to. You can do it on a piece of paper and you run a spreadsheet, whatever. Um, but you just say, you know, gee, I'm doing I'm doing this project. I've got, you know, I've got this much lumber. I've got this many nails and this much caulk and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you just take your receipts and keep it and understand it. But understand what it costs you because you can't – you don't want to work for free, right? You yeah, can't and the devil's, the devil's in the details. And the devil's things. in the details. Yeah, because we were... you, can, you, can really, you can really get, uh, you know, upside down on, on these things. And this, this isn't just the handyman business. Okay, this is folks? business. If you're, this is business 101, okay? If you're, if you're not keeping up with yourself – that you you know you're going to wind up hemorrhaging money that you didn't even know that you're hemorrhaging. So you just you just need to know where everything is and you know that. So. Yeah, and you can and, and and my philosophy is really kiss right. It's keep it simple, stupid. You know, keep it as simple yep. as possible. It does not have to be involved. Yep. And, I, and I'm very OCD when it comes to the numbers. You know, obviously, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still at the end of the day i try to automate all my stuff and keep it simple because i just want to know you know basically what am i what am i taking in what am i spending and what's the difference you know that's that's really what i need to know and then where can i cut back you know if i need to so anyway. mm-hmm. john do we have is there anything else that we're thinking I, about I just on I this think, quick blush yeah i think i think i think this is a good start um you know like like you uh, were mentioning if the, folks if you have questions you know send send the questions to us um, at uh, at handymanprosradioshow dot com. That's questions at handymanprosradioshow dot com. Yep. And and uh, we'd we'd love to you know we'd love to engage there and and and, and um, you know help you out with any information that you might uh, that you might need. But yeah. I think this is a good start of you know people understanding you know just being a if you want to be if you're thinking about being a handyman you know it's a side hustle. Yeah, it's a side hustle. I mean you know I John you know what just the other day. I was sitting in the side lawn, and this spaceship landed, and this dude got out, and he asked me, he said, aren't you the handyman? Can you help me? 
And you know what? What do you think I said to him? What'd you say? You open, open the hood, man. Yeah, hood. I, I'll, I'll that's help you if I can take I'm your ship cool. apart. That's right. That's right. And we're hearing more and more about these UFOs too. So we're not nuts. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed this podcast and have derived some value from it, here's four things you can do. One, tell your friends about this podcast. Two, hit subscribe on your podcast player. While you're there, leave us a review. Three, subscribe to our newsletter by going to handymanprosradioshow.com and click on the subscribe button. We'll inform you of upcoming events, shows, and give you actionable tips for maintaining your home and property. And four, send us an email with your questions to questions at handymanprosradioshow.com. That's handymanprosradioshow.com. That's our show for this week. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week on the Handyman Pros Radio Show.